So, this week, with David Pocock retiring and Alan Wynne Jones becoming the most capped player in history, equaling Richie McCall's record, got us thinking who are the most reliable players in history? Which players stand out alongside those three, alongside Pocock, Alan Wynne Jones, and McCall, as the players you would, you, would, you would most back and rely on week after week after week? Please send us your answers, send in any ideas you have, and we'll read plenty of them out. So I don't entirely know where to start because it has been a weekend of just so much rugby, just loads of rugby. Um, but we might as well begin in Dublin, where Ireland finally played their rearranged Six Nations match six months on against Italy. Uh, they began things very well, CJ Stander scoring a great try, and then Hugo Keenan scoring two tries on his debut with a third one being unfortunately ruled out due to some really cheeky play by James Ryan. Uh, Italy themselves scored a couple of tries uh, with Eduardo Padovani taking a really nice intercept and then last minute of the game with Ireland having, you know, pulled away, done that Ireland thing, Jonathan Sexton scored, the whole, whole kick of Boodle. Uh, then Paolo Garbisi, the young debutante by half, playing just his fourth game of fully professional rugby scored an absolute wonder try, throwing a dummy. I think Jacob Stockdale is still trying to mm -hmm. retrieve. He's still off somewhere, mm -hmm. searching the ground for the, mm -hmm. the ball, the pass that he threw out there in Dublin right now. Uh, it was incredible as a debut. Meanwhile, in other international news, Wales played France in Paris. They started incredibly well for the half penny, scoring in the first minute of the game. Wales getting out to a 10-0 lead. And then um, Anton Dupont and... France in general happened and they were pretty spellbinding to watch. They were, they remain so much fun, this France team. Uh, you just kind of can't take your eyes off them for a second. And Wales did that a couple of times and they can see the try each time, particularly this really lovely score by Teddy Toma, who, when Teddy Toma is trying, he is one of the most entertaining and wonderfully flamboyant and fun players in world rugby. I love him and I love him all the more for the fact that sometimes he will just go entire passages of play without bothering to make a tackle. He just he, he doesn't want to do anything except for spectacularly chip down bigger and score himself in the corner. There were two games in the Women's Six Nations. Ireland put in a pretty impressive performance against Italy in the corresponding game on Saturday and then on Sunday the big result, the big upset of the week as Scotland, who haven't beaten France in 10 years, managed to pull off an incredible draw against a really strong France team who just, sometimes I'm telling you, Toma, just dropped a few balls, just weren't quite entirely on it, and were put under so much pressure by Scotland. It was fantastic. I mean, Lisa Thompson was very, very good, but Jade Conkle, very deservedly player of the match, made an incredible 25 carries and was completely instrumental as well in making the assist uh, for the eventual try. It was a great, really engaging game of rugby and a huge draw for the Scotland women. And they now play Wales next week. And I'm really excited to see how that goes on Sunday. In other international news, Argentina have won the South American Championship this year. Uh, Uruguay slipped to a defeat to Chile, who again then scored a w absolute wonder try against Brazil and have really stood up over the course of the competition, as have Brazil. All four teams have been very strong, and Argentina kind of bounced back from always losing to Chile in that opening game to pull away and win every game, to, to come through all three of their games unbeaten. So huge congratulations to them. The one over international of the weekend saw Scotland comprehensively beat Georgia in a warm-up for the Six Nations and then the Autumn Nations Cup with both sides coming up uh, later in the autumn next month. Uh, again, Scotland, very impressive very fun and some really great tries in amongst there for both teams in the end for both teams club rugby there was another huge game at the weekend as exeter did the double they won the premiership final they saw it through the second premiership title ever and it i mean again against boston the final but it wasn't without its drama it was a game in the rain but it really started to pick up as it went on and the drama began to build as wasps looked like they could win it they had all the momentum they had a kick that would have equalized in, you know, with about four minutes to go, they up for the line out, they go for the win. And then they make a bizarre decision and they initially it looked like they didn't 
they didn't throw up anyone on the line out. It turns out they did, just miles away from the ball. Um, it was one mistake. It was one mistake. They just driven extra back on the ball a moment earlier. Um, and it was all it came down to. It was the finest possible margins. But Exeter have now won the European Cup. They've won the Premiership. They've done the double. In the Pro 14, uh, Ulster and Leinster continue their unbeaten runs. And the other two unbeaten teams in this year's competition, Munster and the Cardiff Blues, met on Monday night for the first ever Monday night Pro 14 game. And... That hasn't been played as I record this, but it has been played by the time you see this. So I want to hugely congratulate Munster on their win last night. Uh, the Ospreys also won another game despite looking completely out of it against Glasgow. And the Connacht won a proper thriller, um, which is a word you could not use to describe the Scarlet's narrow win out in Benetton, which looked like it was destined to be a free all draw <laughs> until a late try a few minutes to go. Top 14, and Claremont and La Rochelle remain top of the table. Kataro Matashima scored his first two Pro 14 tries after scoring in Europe a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, they're always, he's just a wonderful and spectacular player. Toulouse lost their first game at home in two years. Um, I'm not gonna speculate on whether that was entirely down to that Chesney Colby wasn't playing. Um, but I think, it, I think there's definitely gonna be a correlation there. Meanwhile, the Premier 15 is similarly tied to the top. So Saracens and Harlequins are currently joined at the top of the table, with Loughborough only one point behind, all three sides having won all of their games and putting in pretty impressive wins this weekend. And next weekend, we have so much rugby. And so, just in order to catch you up, if you've got confused or lost on any of the rugby that's been happening, here's my quick guide to what's gone on in the Six Nations the 2026 Nations so far in 60 seconds. Wales come in as defending champions and a Josh Adams hat trick plus a debut try for new Prince of Wrexham Nick Tomkins flies them to a bonus point win over Italy, Ireland bash past Scotland who are left kicking themselves after Hogg's slight slip and France really kick things off by tearing through England with style and panache winning for two tries by Johnny May and a late error by Stan Nascom after who can't to hand England a crucial losing bonus point. Ireland then rip through Wales with relative ease taking the full five points in Dublin. England beat Scotland in a game so bad it made us wish Romeo to disappear completely for six months and France score some classy tries against a spirit Italy and fight hard but then can't manage any points at all against a very robust Scotland. France managed their first winning card for 10 years thanks to some sublime underman content and Ireland's succession of brain farts allows England to spiral through them to a comfortable win. The Red Rose boys then see off Wales pretty comprehensively but the Dragon Thieves do score the try of the championship in return. Ireland eventually beat Italy six months later and Scotland then blow the whole job wide open by beating Grand Slam favourites France making England's bonus point look very very relevant indeed going into the final weekend which is coming up on Saturday. Ooh. The one other thing that has happened this week is we saw the first World 10 series and with it came the first ever five point conversion taken from the halfway line. It's it's a huge fun novelty thing going on the World of 10s uh, and it's worth checking out if you get a chance. Have a look, see some of the, the mad stuff going on. There's some real proper stars of the game playing, Dan Norton, Ben Foden, uh, loads of players from across the world taking part in that right now. So last week we asked you for World Rugby's biggest journeys to titles. So we have a penguin in the way. Uh, we also have Duhang saying Springboks going from seventh in the world, their lowest ever world ranking, to winning the World Cup less than two years later. Sam mentions Tasman in the ITM Mighty 10 Cup, where they were perpetual wooden spoon winners and then fought their way to an unbeaten season, winning the Premiership last year. Domino says, I know this is obvious, but Japan from 2011, but obviously they didn't win a game between 1991 in the World Cup and 2015, then obviously beating the Springboks and then going on to qualify out of their group, winning the group outright, beating Ireland and Scotland. Hill, good shout, Connacht going from perpetual bottom of the Pro 14 table to actually winning the whole thing. <laughs> yep, yeah, Gab says, "List the Tigers' amazing journey from 2013 to now." It, exact opposite, to, uh, exact opposite. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel that um, as a as an Osprey fan, I feel that, um, and I'm very sorry that you don't have a very smiley Cockney man currently beginning to turn it around in the form of Toby Booth. Uh, and then Matt Webb says, and this is a lovely note to end on, as always, Uruguay. Enough said.
Uruguay will answer almost any question. Well, thank you very much. I'll see you next week for more of the feed. In the meantime, there's so much rugby. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you then. <laughs>